Hello, episode 17. One seven. And this is uh, episode, the last time we're doing in this setting, we are actually renovating uh, a building right now where we're going to be moving into. Mm-hmm. Um, and today's topic in our Wealth and Wellness podcast is actually going to be something that we both also need to work towards still because um, the are couples out there, I'm sure, just like us, that need to work together. And they can be challenging sometimes because there's different needs, perceptions, experience levels, desires. So no, no matter whether it's like working together on real estate or like a home renovation or mm-hmm. business together, I'm sure you had things come up with your partner, spouse, or just even like a business partner, you know, and these tips we're going to try to share that we actually need to also follow them better. But I try to follow these. I try to think about these um, points that we're going to share myself. Um, And hopefully you can find it helpful. Mm -hmm. Uh, So for example, uh, one of the things is um, when we work together, we should always set clear expectations. Whether it's business, even when you hire someone or you start working for someone, you want to know like, okay, what is my responsibilities or what is this other person's duties, responsibilities? So that like nobody's stepping on each other's toes. And then it's important to recognize what strengths we have, you know, like as a, let's say as a married couple, we don't work like, let's say legally in a job or a company together, but we work together on different things. So over the years, we um, figured out, okay, well, you're better at these things. I'm better at these things. So let me take care of this part and you're going to take care of this part. And then there's like less conflict that way. Mm -hmm. For example, yeah. And it goes with, um, you know, if you're doing a renovation, you should also have clear expectations for your contractors and subs as well. And I also recommend if you're like a landlord or a, you're working with contractors or whatever, is, you know, kind of designate one person as the, the, the point person, so to speak. So if, you know, you have a tenant and there's three or four people that own the building, just as an example, you know, kind of designate one person as the, the contact person. Obviously, the tenant, the sub, the contractor can kind of contact anybody, but then that way there's a clear message, right? You're, you're not, oh, well, I, someone said this, someone said that, someone said this, that, and then it's a mixed message. The tenants don't know what's going on. Your contractor doesn't know what's going on, or they get information from one person, and then they start doing something without the other yeah. person knowing. And they can get lost in translation, and they'll mm-hmm. be like, well, I told this person this, but then like yeah. that other person didn't approve it or didn't tell them in time that, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. okay, like, for example, oh, I want to go paint this right now, or like, I want to um, install these tiles over here you know and then maybe that's not wasn't really the way to do it and then things got can get messed up yeah and think about you know order of operations too when you're setting out expectations right you know you don't want to i'm trying to think of like an example here you know you don't want to uh you know paint a room if you're planning on um, you know, re- replacing the sheetrock or, or, well, or yeah, whatever. that would be very you know, or, inefficient. You know, but just, you know, with like, um, you know, IT stuff, you know, there's a semi-order of operations. Yeah, like, okay, you know, the network wiring needs to be done before we can install, you know, the new computers. However, while you're waiting on the network install or the cabling install, there's, you know, maybe you can protect the computers with a new antivirus or whatever. Yeah, or like uh, simple things like uh, we need to find a location before we can move ahead, like starting to think about marketing the business mm-hmm. you know so yeah those things apply you know and like to the basic level okay maybe we want to paint first before we redo the flooring because then we don't have to have to worry to cover the flooring as much and to ruin the flooring um yeah so um setting clear expectations and dividing tasks you know based on who is better and suited for them like for example i'm more like a people's person and Nicholas is more like technology and detail oriented person. Let me shut this. Um, uh, yeah, so it really um, makes sense that, you know, he does tasks that are more related to that. And maybe I'm better at negotiating with contractors, things like that. Because, uh, you know, I work with my job is working people, hiring people. Uh, let's shut this little uh, sound off down here. There we go. Yeah, so. The other thing is um, 
communicating op openly and uh, respectfully. You know, if something does come up, um, it's 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 amazing how saying the same thing in two different ways can make such a difference. You know, because if you don't like something, you could say, "Oh, this is wrong. This is stupid. I hate. Why did you do this?" You know, versus saying, "You know, maybe we should. I feel like we should try something else. We should try something different. Maybe this was not the best choice. Let's think about how we can." fix this or avoid, you know, the problem. So using language to, you know, respect the other person and their effort, recognize that their intention was good, you know, but maybe it didn't work out the way that they thought it would. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And making sure that, you know, there's going to be times during the process of a renovation or renting or being a landlord or, or, or whatever, any sort of process that you're going to spend money essentially to a week or two later to essentially be like, wow, that was literally like money down the, the toilet, so to speak, because, you know, there was a construction mix-up, the, the right message didn't get to the right person, or you thought it did. Um, so, you know, be ready for things like that to happen. Yeah, and then, you know, when, if things that happen, we got to recognize, okay, well, just that's just a part of... Um, that's just a part of how things go sometimes, mm -hmm. and it's cost of doing business you know not every single thing every single thing might work out all the time and we gotta make peace with it that life is not perfect you know and no matter what we do it's going to um we gotta run into those situations so you know being patient and flexible and uh trying to look at the bigger picture because like any joint projects you know uh, especially when things don't go smoothly, can become like even break up relationships, you know, and, and partnerships. And, and that's why a lot of partnerships in business actually don't work out because, um, you know, business partners, they don't agree or they don't know how to find a compromise. Or um, So it's not that easy, you know, to do sometimes. But if we need to like adjust and f compromise and have some flexibility um, and recognize other person's you know contributions it really helps to reduce that friction and if do and if things do get uh like maybe overwhelming or like to a boiling point where someone is about to like really lose their marbles or something you can um just you gotta walk away for a minute and take a break uh, maybe go meditate for a second or go exercise like for example we did uh 10k and, and 5k this morning you know so doing like things outside of that work um and doing something fun to relax can really help because at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world, even no matter what happens, even if things can get screwed up a little bit, like it's not um, the end of the world. And no matter how much you plan or how much you communicate, things are going to get screwed up regardless, right? You have contractors in there, they have subs coming in or maybe subs of subs. By the time it gets to the person actually doing the work, they might not even really know who they're even doing the work for. They right. just know that they're supposed to go to this property to do whatever. Yeah. And I've had this before with IT consulting where, you know, being the, the, the company that's actually doing the work, like, for example, at the airport, you're so far removed, even though you're doing work for a major airline, there's three or four people in that chain. Right. And I've run into it before where by the time the information gets to you and then you start going through the checklist or whatever and you're like, this doesn't make sense. Like something is not right here. <clears throat> yeah. So you contact your contact, they contact their contact. And I remember one time that, Oh yeah, you guys have, yeah, that's the wrong checklist. That's the wrong. You don't, you don't have the right one. It's like, I've got what I've got. Right. You know, so you have to be careful about that too, is, you know, the, the, People that are necessarily being the boots on the ground or doing the work might not know who they're doing the work for or exactly what work they're supposed to be doing. So you have to be careful because, you know, they're going to come in and they go into the bathroom and, oh, there's a, a broken towel hot, hold, towel rod holder. Is that the right word? I don't even know. Mm -hmm. Hard word to say. But anyways, you know, there's something, a, a fixture that's on the, like half the paper towel holder roll is there, you know, and they paint around it. And it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, you, you know. It's, it's broken. You should have taken off before you painted it. You know, yeah, like, that happened to our bathroom. You know, because, you know, Yolita told them to paint it for progress to happen without thinking that they're just going to paint around this stuff. You well, know? yeah, and it wasn't the painter that I'm used to working with, so, you know, it didn't occur to me that I needed to, like, specify. But, but what I'm getting at with that is even though you hire... It could be a large, professional, well-known company. They're going to come in, and they're going to do essentially what they want, right? Unless you have someone there 
to keep an eye on them. You know, like you need to have either you keeping an eye on them, the general contractor, or someone. Well, or set clear expectation ahead of but, time. But even a clear expectation ahead of time. Say you, you know, have a, a large sheetrocking project, you know, and, you know, you'd say, you know, insulate above this and do this and do that. And then by the time they're actually there, they forget about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and yeah, people forget about stuff, but, you know, then it causes delays. Yeah. You know, they might have to redo work. You know, so that's where it's setting that clear expectations, doing walkthroughs, going and checking on the progress. Don't just assume that because you hired a professional company to do it, that they're going to do it the right way. You need to have someone to check on it. You know, like I went into a retail store once after the sheetrock taping and mudding was done and they like there was temporary string lighting in the place and they literally sheetrocked walls without taking down the temporary lighting. And is that the problem of the sheet rockers? No. Is it the problem of the tapers? No. Is it the GC? Probably. Is it the electricians? Probably. You know, but you just can't think just because you have all these professional companies doing it that the right message is getting to the right people. Well, and contractors often, they're focused on their sole duty and, you know, they they don't work always the best. They don't always think about the next guy that's going to have to come in after them. You know, they're just focused. Let me get this my task done. Every, yeah, you know, every Every trade wants to get in. They want the space to themselves. They don't want to have to work around anybody. They want to get in and get out. And if that causes more work for, say, the cleaners or whatever, well, they're on to the next job. You know, so you have to be careful about making sure that, you know, they're doing what they've been contracted and they're going to be paid to do, but also that they're cleaning up after themselves, yeah. right? You know, that they're they're doing a professional, commercial, or whatever level job you've, you've hired them for. Yeah. So, yeah, so if something like this happens, you know, it's important not to get upset or angry. You know, you just got to accept that, okay, it's bound to happen. Like, things like that can happen. And uh, so you can go for a walk or go for a run to reset the mood, you know, or maybe go out and have a nice dinner. Um, I'm not saying all the time you would be doing that, but, um, but, but, at times that, you know, it gets too much and it can get too much for sure. Um, and then, you know, appreciating uh, each other's efforts is very important. Um, you know, saying compliments, even to contractors, like if everyone likes to be praised for their work. Um, so, you know, if you see something nice, even if something's not like ideal or maybe you wish something different we can always find something positive to say so if we do have criticism we would want to first find um something positive to say because that will uh definitely help with the relationship and uh overcome hurdles that are that you know that can get in the way during the the job process the renovation or the project process and, you know, celebrating, like, small success, for example. Um, yeah, so that, that is important. And, you know, if there are some things that you um, don't agree, like, you can agree to disagree, you know, and perhaps you could um, you could decide to, well, we just can't agree on this. So maybe we uh, need to, like, do paper, rock, scissors, you know, and see which person wins because, uh, like, and when you have two personalities, it's not going to be, like, that you're going to agree or, on every single thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, during a renovation, if you can't make a decision, you know, ask like a realtor or something like that. I don't think that that's the right answer, but, you know, you could ask some sort of third party, you know. Yeah, that's the other. Uh, Even someone yeah. like at Lowe's, like, you know, if you're not sure about kitchen cabinets or something, just as an example, you know, ask the, the person at, at Lowe's. You know, I was there the other day buying stain, just as an example, to try to color match trim. And I'm looking and I'm like, I'm like I don't know, this looks close enough. And then there was, you know, a younger lady working there and I was just like, hey, what do you think? And she was like, you think that those two match? I'm like, I don't know, they look close to me. And then she was like, no, I'm pretty sure that this is better, you know. So, you know, just sometimes, and then it was kind of like, all right, well, I mean, I'm thinking my head isn't leaving well. It's, it's not my responsibility if it doesn't match. The lady at Lowe said, you know, it was close enough or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, discussing, you know, uh, things with other people like that is very helpful. Yeah. And the, the one thing before we move on to the next topic, if you're a landlord or you're doing renovations or you're just doing work in your own house, you know, one thing that is, for me, with an engineer mindset, it's a little bit hard to kind of swallow is that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And that doesn't mean that you want 
like you know sloppy right like you know in the IT world like you don't want to just run a cable across the conference room floor right you know that's that's sloppy that's that's poor quality work but you know it also doesn't need to be zip tied 18 inches above you know the drop ceiling every 12 feet, you know, 12 inches or whatever. As long as it's up to code. Yeah, you know, as long as it's up to code, you know, there's going to be times, you know, when, you know, like you look at it and it's like all oh, the trim, like, I mean, it's like 90% good type deal. And, and sometimes that's, that that's the deal, right? Yeah. You know, that 10% could be the difference between, you know, uh, yeah. uh, the project being done on time or, you know, not. And sometimes yeah. you just kind of have to. And the to, price too. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just kind of have to be like, okay, you know what? It's, it's, it's good enough, you know? Yeah. But don't get stuck in, you know, what they're doing. Yeah, you know, it's never going to be perfect. But also, don't be afraid if you see work that is crappy work. Yeah. You know, that that's not okay Absolutely, either. Absolutely, yeah. You know? and, and if you talk to a contractor in a nice tone, not a ca- accusatory, and you just explain to them that, hey, we really wanted it this way, and, you know, we guys talked, and we uh, discussed that you're going to do it that way, they, they will understand, you know, they will fix whatever that... The way it, you agreed on, so that that's you know comes back to those ahead of having conversation with the expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then you know when you're working together on a project together, you know you both should know like whether you're husband and wife or partners um, why you're doing it, like the bigger why you know the bigger picture um, that you're working towards common goal and you're both prerogative and main. Um, goal is to have it completed successfully and have nice uh, place or house or apartment that you're working on or a project could be like a business that you're both working on together opening or buying or developing so uh, you know not losing sight of that um, that common goal it can really help to 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 stay respectful and not, you know, get crazy over like stressful times and experience like it's when something can go wrong and you know keeping a sense of humor, you know. At the end of the day, you know, it's not like death or anything. As long as nobody dies, you know, it's okay. Like it's not a life and death situation if like she drop gets like messed up or something like that. So those are not things that matter. What matter more is the relationship, like how strong is the relationship? Can we work through challenges together and our health, you know, keeping in mind that health is well most people our health is important, so stressing out over small stuff is not the best for for anyone so let us know guys if you have any tips um, because it's easy like even knowing these points it's easy to um, forget about it and sometimes you know get so into it that we uh, lose the priorities or the real sight of things or why we doing something you know for example we are doing this renovation because we would like to we want a bigger space you know we need a bigger space Mm -hmm. and a nice space where we could invite uh, Nick's family maybe my family over to have uh, food and maybe stay over if my family comes over from Europe for example to visit Um, and we'll have our separate office room so that will be nice so that's something that we wanted um, and that's what we're working towards too Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so this is episode 16. Um, do you I thought have it was 17. 17 already? Okay, yeah, that's what I thought I said. Yeah, so we are about to go get massages because we did good in our morning races. So we'll try to relax a little bit. Um, this is Sunday, we're recording this on, and we're going to take our own advice and uh, do something for you know, that uh, little break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one thing that, you know, Yolita just kind of reminded me of is, you know, don't get caught up in the hype from people like on social media or in the news saying, oh, they get four hours of sleep and they work 20 hours a day every day. They may think that they do that, you know, or they just say they do that, but it's not realistic, right? For most people, it's not. For anybody. And it's not healthy. You, You can't function, the human body can't function on four hours of sleep. 
Even Elon Musk gets like six hours, he said, or seven. But but yeah. regardless of who you are, right? You know, the older you get, the more sleep you need. And, you know, it's not healthy to function on no sleep. Yeah, sleep is very You know, important. when I've flown to Asia a lot for, for business, and, you know, it's a long flight, it's a lot of traveling, I don't really sleep very well in planes, you know, naps here and there. But, you know, you get there, and it's like you've been awake for almost a day, day and a half, maybe two days straight, and you can feel it, like, in your head. It's harder to think, you know? If you're hungry, it's harder to... You're just like, I can't figure out this problem because I'm just so tired and hungry or, or whatever, you know. So take time to make sure that even if the project's going to take a little bit longer, it's it might be worth it to... To put those breaks in. Yeah, to, to say, you know, okay, this is going to take a week longer because you're going to take a day and not go there and, you know, or, yeah. or take another day to figure out things or whatever because you're much... You know, progress for the sake of progress is not necessarily worth it because you might end up doing the work twice or, or three times. You know, it might sound good to, oh, well, you know, uh, we need a new entryway door, right? And, you know, Portland Glass or whoever, they, they've got a, a, a opening a today, list, yeah. you know? So, like, oh, like, like, let's get the, the, the door in and installed and, you know, then we'll be done. Okay, well, now you have contractors going in and out of a brand new door for maybe weeks on end, bringing in sheetrock, the toilet, lumber, whatever, you know, that door is going to just get beat up, mm -hmm. right? You know, so it's like, well, in the end, maybe it was like, okay, well, it's going to take longer to get that door in there, but, you know, okay, well, you get it in, and the only people coming in and out are maybe, you know, the, the plumber to do a couple of things, or maybe the, you know, cleaners yeah. or, or, or something, you know? It's better to think about the order of operations and not necessarily just get it done just to get it done. Yeah, because, I mean, the damage can happen. Sometimes people ding up the new stuff. It's never fun. Yeah. And oftentimes they don't want to pay to fix it. You know? Yeah, or, you know, a lot of times, you know, in a construction zone, people are looking for, for level space, right, to put tools or to work on stuff or whatever. And it's like, oh, there's a stove. Oh, great. Even though that stove is brand new and maybe they put a tarp or something on it, you know, it, it's still going to get dinged up, right? Yeah, you know? might, yeah, that's possible. You know, oh, we have this really nice kitchen table. It's in the way. Well, we'll put it out on the porch and we'll put a tarp on it. And, you know, it rains. You and, would hope. Thing would you know, but, but it's just stuff like that that, you know, good good intentions, but maybe not necessarily the, the right thing to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. be careful about the, the fallacy of, you know, just, I want progress to... Do things in order. Yeah, like, you know, it's good to have progress, but progress for the sake of progress is not necessarily, you know, the right decision. Yep, yep. and getting enough sleep, you know, it's important. Like, before the mm -hmm. 90s or 2000s, even people kind of poo-pooed and looked down on, like, people that want to get sleep like they're saying, like, you sleep when you're dead. And actually, I used to say that, like, in my 20s or late, like, before my even 20s, um, late teens, like, I want to go to music school, I want to go to, I need to do, well, you know, good grades in high school, and I would just, like, skip, like, have, like, study till late, wake up early, you know, and I say, well, I need to do all these things. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, if your health suffers, like, you won't accomplish those good long-term goals as well. And you just burn out and you crash, you know, and then you you don't want to even do anything anymore. Yeah. So and it's it's important to have build in the breaks. Yeah, so. and it's good, you know, if you're like, well, I don't want to take a break and just sit around the house. Well, like, you know, it was a week or two ago and there was a, re a local real estate meetup, right, in town. And I'm like, well... I don't really want, like, I want some sort of break. I don't really want to just go home and sit around at the house because I know I'll end up doing work. It's like, okay, well, I'll go to this real estate networking event, which is still kind of work, so to speak. But, you know, like, saw some people that I see all the time. You know, you can, you know, chit-chat about random stuff. You can chit-chat about real estate. Maybe just socialize. Yeah, just socialize a little bit. And, you know, if you're someone that's like, well, going to events where I don't know anybody is going to be really daunting, it's like, well, I like talking about real estate. I like to see what other people are doing. I like construction. I like renovations, you know. Um, and then you, you know, end up meeting other people. And maybe it's just people that you hang out with at the real estate event. Or maybe it's like, oh, like, you know, hey, uh, my wife and I just moved to town a couple weeks ago. We don't know anybody. Like, maybe you guys want to go and get, you know, some pizza or something. It's like, oh, yeah, actually, that would be fun. You know, it would be nice to go and, you know, get dinner with a couple, you know, or, some, or you know, someone new just to, to chit-chat, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So I hope that these tips were ha uh, helpful. I hope that these are helpful. Um, I know that um, I try my best to always remember some of these points, and it does help, you know. It mm -hmm. does help to remember other people's uh, feelings and that they are looking out, you know, to get the best result the way, way I am. So 
And if you have additional tips, like I mentioned, put them down below. We appreciate also subscribe to our podcast and video. We post on YouTube, uh, Spotify, iTunes podcast, and some clips on TikTok, Instagram. If you're interested in opening massage and skincare business, please get in touch with me. We offer great franchise opportunities. And we're going to be very involved with the first 10 franchisees so you have a good opportunity to get in early. And if you need any IT services for Let small business, cyber security yeah. services. Yep. And if, if you're a listener and you're curious about a, a certain topic, like let, let us know. You know, it, maybe it's something that we can com- cover and we've dealt with and found strategies around, or maybe you want to be on the podcast and, you know, do a collab, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. We will probably want to do those in the future, and we're not experts by any means on all these topics, but we just share from our experience, and this is not financial or any medical advice, so take it, uh, you know, as it is, but I do hope it's helpful. Yep. Have a great day, everyone. Have a brilliant day, and thank you for listening.